Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Hedges. I'm the lead solution engineer at Rendered AI, and I'm going to show you how to get started on the Rendered AI platform. Once you've registered, click Sign In to log in with your credentials to access the platform. Here we can see our account landing page. As a new user, you must first set up your organization. This is where your workspaces will be housed and where all members of your team will be able to contribute to existing channels, generate new data sets, and share their work. New users to the platform will have an organization named Default. Update this to reflect your business or project name by clicking the user icon in the top right to see the menu of account settings. Here we can change the name of the organization. Invite new users. And see summary information about the organization, such as channels and workspaces. Channels are the containers for assets and code built upon rendered AI's open source code base that defines the sensors, sensor platforms, environments, and objects of interest that will dictate the synthetic data that is output. Workspaces enable us to organize synthetic data generation for specific projects or capabilities. We can create data sets within organizations using graphs that enable channel configuration. From our organization's landing page, we can see the workspaces available. Here we can access existing workspaces and create new ones. All accounts come with a workspace named Example, containing the rendered AI example channel to get you started. Custom channels can be developed by referencing our support documentation or by reaching out to the rendered team directly. Within a workspace, we can configure the workspace name and settings and invite guests to collaborate. We can also see any graphs that exist here already and create new graphs. Rendered AI graphs store the relationships between objects and direct the flow of operations to create synthetic data. Multiple graphs can be created for a single channel, and each graph is used to create synthetic data sets with different properties. In the Rendered AI web interface, we can view and edit graphs without requiring coding to configure synthetic data generation for specific needs. Let's create a new graph by clicking the plus icon in the graphs section. Select the channel that you'll be working with. Give your graph a name and a description and click create. Now we can see the default graph that is initially configured in the channel. The nodes shown as boxes represent the objects and modifiers that define the graph. And the links between them, called edges, denote the directed flow of operations in the rendering pipeline. We can update the graph in a number of ways. For example, we can add new nodes by clicking the plus sign icon in the top left of the screen. This opens a list of all the nodes defined for the channel, such as features of interest, backgrounds, renderers, and modifiers. Let's add a new object of interest to our graph. Let's use the mix cube. And connect it to our object placement node. This node defines where in the scene the object can potentially be placed and how many of them to place. By editing the parameters in a placement node, we can update the number of objects to be placed. Or, if we want that number to be random, we can add a number generator node. With this node placed, we can then provide a min and a max number 
and connect that to our number of objects parameter. With these changes in place, click Preview to see a sample rendering of the graph. This is a good way to quickly see the effect a change to the graph has on the output. When working with graphs, you may want to create variations as separate graphs. To do so, choose Duplicate and create a new graph with a new name. Return to the workspace and choose the new graph to start editing without modifying the original graph. Once you're happy with the graph configuration and preview, click the Stage button to stage your graph for production. This registers a graph as able to be used for synthetic data generation jobs, and it will appear in the Jobs pane. Here you can provide a name and description for your job and specify requirements, including the number of images to generate and the priority of the job if you are running multiple jobs at once. To initiate each run with a known pseudo-random generator, you can specify a seed number manually. Every run with that number will follow the same pseudo-random sequence, enabling you to compare differences between graphs with minor parameter changes. If this isn't of importance to you, you can use auto seed generation to pick an arbitrary random sequence for generating stochastic variation in the run. Once you hit Run, the job is added to the jobs window, and progress can be monitored using the provided real-time indicators. When the job is complete, click the Datasets tab to see the completed job. You can see up to 10 preview images of the output dataset. You can then select your dataset and click Download to download the dataset. The output dataset folder contains the images, masks, annotations, and metadata for this run, as well as a YAML descriptor file for both the graph and the dataset to run again. You're now ready to use this dataset for training your AI models. I hope this overview has been helpful. For more information about the rendered AI platform and the best practices for using it, check out our support pages at support.rendered.ai. Here you'll find a step-by-step -step learning guide accompanied by in-depth documentation about the rendered AI web application and SDK.